Hello everyone, my name is Paula and welcome to Lunchtime with the Irish Peatland Conservation Council. This series of talks is sponsored by the Community Foundation for Ireland and the Irish Environmental Network. On our last talk, we um, went through peatland habitat assessment, where there were eight criteria to assessing your peatland, and one of those was drainage and drying. So the theme for today's talk is water, our bog's lifeline. Now, just a brief uh, introduction for those who actually don't know much about the Irish Peatland Conservation Council. We are a charity and our mission is to conserve a representative sample of peatlands for people today and for future generations. We are based at the Bogavala Nature Centre in Lullymore, Wathangan, County Kildare. We own and manage five peatland reserves, so Lodge Bog and Lullymore West in County Kildare, Fenner Bog in Waterford, Gurley Bog in Meath and Cold Bog in Kerry. Um, our work includes uh, a lot of different areas, such as site conservation, the monitoring of species, peatland policy, research and education and awareness. The Save the Box campaign is guided by peatland conservation action plans. Uh, we have developed seven so far since uh, the foundation in 1982, and our latest action plan is called Peatland and Climate Change Action Plan 2030, which should be read in conjunction with the Peatlands and Conservation Action Plan 2020, halting the loss of peatland biodiversity. Now to learn more or um, purchase our latest Peatland and Climate Change Action Plan, you can visit our website at www.ipcc.ie. So how much water is in peatlands? Well, first of all, Water is essential for bogs and can be described as the blood of the bog. Uh, a peat is essentially the accumulation of dead plant material in waterlogged conditions. Um, now, the percentage of these components, these components varies depending on the peatland habitat. For example, in a raised bog, uh, it contains from 90% water and 10% dead plant material, whereas a fen contains 98% water and 2% dead plant material. The source of water varies again depending on the peatland habitat. Um, our raised bogs and blanket bogs are fed by rainwater and are acidic in nature. Um, geographical location is a very important factor in contributing to the formation of these peatland habitats. So our blanket bogs were formed typically in the uplands of Ireland, uh, in areas where uh, rainfall was over 1200 millimetres. Uh, raised bogs were then formed in the Midlands and the Lower Band Valley, where rainfall was 800 millimetres. Um, there are two layers of, uh, there are two layers in peatland, in peatlands, uh, the catotellum, which is a lower layer, uh, and it is the permanently waterlogged layer, which can be up to several metres deep. The acrotellum is the upper living layer of the peat, which can be 10 to 20 centimetres deep. Uh, and it is here where the high water table is very critical. And um, the acrotellum supplies water to the catotellum. And without the acrotellum, um, the bog cannot accumulate peat, hence why um, a high water table is very, very important. The source of water on a fen, uh, which is an alkaline habitat, is from groundwater and springs. Now this groundwater influences the floral communities um, creating a rich biodiversity uh, and the groundwater is uh, sometimes rich in nutrients as well. The fence can be divided into two groups um, due to the flow of water. So topogenous and sologenous are our, our two groups. The topogenous fens form within the basins of the landscape where the water fluctuations are in a vertical direction and the water then accumulates on account of the topography. The sologenous fens are formed uh, where there's sloping terrain with a continuous supply of flowing water. The horizontal movement is more important than the, the vertical movement of water. There are three of each um, type. So there are three types of sologenous uh, fens and two types of topogenous fens. But for today's session, we're not actually going to go into much detail with that. 
the importance of water on peatlands. Um, so uh, the acidic nature of our raised and blanket bogs um, and the high water table creates intolerable conditions for um, ages of decay um, invertebrate bacteria. So um, basically, uh, it, it creates intolerable conditions for microorganism and bacteria, and therefore the dead plant material is not decomposed, uh, which results in the accumulation of peat. Uh, the drainage of peatlands actually lowers the water table, and uh, which then allows for um, oxygen to enter the peat and for the decomposition of plant material to begin, which in turn releases greenhouse gases like carbon and methane. Um, sphagnum moss is known as the bog builder uh, for its peat forming properties. Uh, it needs a, a water table of at least 20 centimetres below the surface for it to grow. And ideally, we would like a, a, a water table of less than 10 centimetres below the surface. So that would be, you know, ideal conditions. But for sphagnum growth, we actually need a water table of 20 centimetres below the surface. Now, here in our image, uh, we can see the, the flow of rainfall. So it, it flows down and um, it reaches, it goes from the acrotellum into the catotellum. And then you do get some flow off the, the bogs. So uh, typically on the raised bog as well. It, as well. So you, you get flow of water off the edge of the bog. Now, um, on the, a bog where the vegetation is still intact, the flow of water uh, would slow down due to the presence of the vegetation. So sphagnum moss especially would soak up a lot of that water. And then in the case of uh, water being released off the bog into um, a nearby water source, it would be slower and the water would actually be cleaner as well. Um, OK, so monitoring the water table. Um, for, so following uh, the habitat assessment and the development of a management plan, which you'll find more information about in our last talk, um, you, you would assess the hydrology of the site and the work that needs to be completed, such as you'd identify the location of drains and you'd undertake drain profiling. Now, to understand more about this, um, it will be explored in our next um, talk next week. So with all this, you may think about then recording the water table. And to do this, you would actually insert a series of piezometers, which are hollow pl plastic piping, um, across the centre region of the peatland and along drains, which allows you to monitor the water level throughout the year. And it also helps you to track your progress by letting you know if conditions are suitable for sphagnum transfer. So you can see here on our map, this is Lodge Bog in County Kildare. We have a series of transects going across the bog. So A, G, we also have transect going down through the bog. And then we also have piezometers then at a lot of different drain locations throughout the site. Okay, so we do have a series of steps which you can undertake in order to monitor the water level on your bog. Step one, you would design a, a set of transects as shown in the map across the peatland to create a route for monitoring the piezometers. So you would essentially do this prior to um, field work. So you would Ident identify where the drains are, where you would like the piezometers to go, and um, your your route, so your transect route. And along your transect route, you will um, record the water table in those piezometers. Um, the transect and the piezometer locations will depend on the location of drains and habitats. So here on our map, do you have various habitats? So up at the very top of the map is actually a, a road here. And down at the very bottom is um, a woodland. And um, we, want to, we want to gather some more information about the impacts of these particular habitats on our bog uh, and compare water tables between these locations and locations throughout the bog itself. So it's important to encompass a lot of different habitats on your peatland. So you label the transects as well and the piezometers, and this makes it much easier for tracing back through past data. So if you want to compare water levels in one particular piezometer from one year to the next, um, labeling them would be a, a very important step to take.
Um, so step two, how to make a piezometer. Uh, well, you can actually um, use digital water loggers, but IPCC use um, plastic piping because it is cost effective. It allows for engagement so you can actually see what you're doing in the field and there's lower maintenance in terms of technology. And it can be easily made by all. So you can um, purchase this plastic piping. You can see an image in your local hardware store. Now, the equipment you need is plastic piping and you cut it into um, typically about two meter lengths. Um, but that, again, depends on um, your bog, which I'll explain in more detail. Um, you will need um, some old tights, um, a drill and duct tape. <clears throat> so using a drill, you will create a series of holes on one side of the plastic piping. And I have labeled this A to show you in my next image. Um, and this will be the side that will go into the peat and it allows for water to flow into the piezometer. Now, the idea about the tights is that tights will, will stop um, peat from getting into the piezometer, but it will allow water to get in because if we have peat getting into the piezometer, it may block the tube or, or it may actually raise the water table. So we just want the water coming into the pipe. You can see in the first image here, there is a series of poles we created with the drill. And um, here we have the types, tights, which are actually duct taped around. And also um, we block the bottom of this side of the tube with a bottle cap. So it's just a, a normal bottle cap you could find from a milk can. You'd block the bottom of the tube and duct tape it around. Now here is our um, finished uh, piezometer which we created. Side A is the side that goes into the piece. So it's the side with the bottle cap and the series of holes and the, the, the pair of tights brought up. And we have done nothing to the side uh, labeled B. So I have the tights um, duct taped here and I have them wound around tightly because I don't want the tights to move or I especially don't want them to rip when it's going into the bog. So I, I wrap it around tightly and uh, duct tape it to keep it in place. Now the installation of the piezometer, so that is step three. You will need um, the piezometers you've created you need a map of the site and the drain locations. So this is the map you created where you are going to pop down these piezometers and uh, along your transect route. And you will need your GPS and your recording sheet and a mallet. So the GPS um, you will need because you will have obtained um, GPS readings for the location of these um, piezometers. So you will do that before you actually get down to the bog. You will create your map. Um, and your transect with the piezometer locations and you will um, acquire or obtain GPS readings um, which you will use to find them on the bog. So you gather your equipment and head to the site and you use your GPS coordinates to identify where the piezometers will go. Um, now before you place the piezometer into the bog, um, what we would suggest is you make a hole with a, um, a pipe or a, a rod. And this is so to um, reduce the, the risk of damage to the, to the piezometer as there are um, roots and vegetation on the bog. So you would make a, a hole with the pipe or rod first, and then you would push down the piezometer with the side A. So that is the side where the bottle cap and the tights are. You push that right down into the peat. Now you don't push it down fully. You would leave a part of, of the piezometer out on the surface and the, the height above the surface will vary depending on the depth of the water table. Um, so just say, for instance, you had a drain beside uh, where you were going to put a piezometer and the drain was two meters deep. Well, your piezometer of two meters deep possibly will not actually reach the water table. So you would get a reading of bottom of tube. So you might not actually see or record where the water table is. So the length of your piezometer will depend on the, the length of some of the drains on the bog or where the water table is. Um, so you would label the piezometer along the transect um, as seen in the image here. You can label it with a permanent marker and this helps you to identify 
each piezometer from the next, especially when we're just getting used to a, a new transect or um, a new piezometer placed into the peat. Um, and then, so you would do the step prior to the installation. So you'd label uh, it on a map and then you would use your permanent marker to label the piezometer uh, on the bog. How to monitor the water table in the piezometer. So this is step four. Um, you will need a small instrument um, called a plopper. And this is used to um, identify the level of the water in the piezometer. Uh, IPCC uh, especially use this uh, plopper instrument and it is a very simple instrument made from metal. Uh, it is essentially a hollow piece of metal tapered at the end. So you can see here in the image, tapered at the end and with a wood, a piece of wood inside. So inside the plopper is a piece of wood and it's tapered at the end to stop it from coming out. And an orange, orange string is attached. So the orange string can be up to two meters length, but that will also depend on the length of your piezometer. And the idea is that um, the string will be able to reach down um, as far down as it needs to go to reach the, the water table. And you'll be able to then measure that against a, a meter stick. So when you place the, the open side of the plopper gently into the water, it makes a plop sound. And this allows you to determine where the water level is. So you can see here the wooden piece inside of the plopper. Now recording the water table. So this is step five. Decide how you will record the water table, for example, once a month um, or quarterly. So I would recommend as well, if you are recording once a month or quarterly, you record um, the same months each year and keep the standard to compare results and have at least one year's results before making your decision on restoration. So that is key um, to make a very good decision on what work you're kind of going to do on the bog. You need to have at least one year's data. So the equipment you need is a recording sheet, a pen, a meter stick and a plopper. So you use the meter stick um, to measure how much of the tube is sticking out of the surface of the bog. And IPCC always record north. I would re recommend that you set a standard. So if you record south, always record every piezometer south, as there are some differences um, when the vegetation begins to grow around the piezometer. So on the north side of the piezometer, you might have vegetation that's growing at a faster rate, so giving um, a shorter measurement for the outside tube. Um, then in comparison to the south side, which might have vegetation, which is very low growing. So you insert the plopper into the tube, you listen for the plop sound and you keep hold of the string. So you don't want the string to fall into the plopper or to fall into the piezometer. And then you remove the plopper with your fingers placed on the string at the top of the piezometer. And you measure this then against the meter stick and write down the reading on your recording sheet. So um, you measure from the tip of the plopper to where the string reached the top of the piezometer. So that is important. So the very, very tip of the plopper up to where the string touched the top of the piezometer. Now, data analysis, this would be step six. So you would create an Excel sheet and you would log the data as shown here in the table. And this would be similar to the recording sheet you would take out in the field. So I have my transect B and I have all the piezometers labeled. Now I have um, labels here for centimeters sticking out. So this would be the, the tube, the, the length of the tube sticking out of the peat and centimeters from tube would be the water table inside of the tube. Um, now, to get the water table, you would minus the, the inside tube from the outside tube, and that would give you the water table. If there is um, any water around the tube on the outside as well, or standing water, I would also recommend that you record this as well. So with this data, you can create graphs and tables to show changes in the water table for seasons and from year to year. You can see here, I have created my graph, um, February, May, August and December are the seasons we recorded or the months and um, it shows where the water table has dropped and where it is uh, above 20 centimetres um, below the surface. 
so you can keep track of kind of all the piezometers on the bog. Um, now again, just going on further with our data analysis, so you would identify where the water is lowest and why. So is the, the piezometer near a drain? Um, so for example, um, if we look at uh, piezometer B2, okay, so the red color here on our graph, it has a very low water table in May, but then it moves up again in uh, so February and up to December. Now, when I'm looking at a water table like that, I would look at my map and identify where B2 is located and is actually located down here in the woodland. So there's B2 in the woodland on Lodge Bog. Um, so the woodland would have a significant influence on the water table. So the trees would, would absorb or take up a lot of that water, creating a water, a lower water table in the area. So you look at season and location and the influence of woodland. <laughs> um, step seven. So based on these results, you would then decide on an action uh, for drain blocking. And my colleague will be exploring this next Tuesday. So Tuesday the 4th of May will be um, drain blocking. So if you want to learn more about the importance of water and how to block the drain, um, do tune in. And for all other um, uh, past uh, lunchtime talks, you can actually find them on our YouTube channel. Um, so if you're not already a friend of the bog, um, please join and become a friend of the bog and support the work of the Irish Peatland Conservation Council. Um, if you'd like to look, know more information about that, you can go onto our website at ipcc.ie or contact us at bogs at ipcc.ie. Um, thank you all very much for taking part in this lunchtime with the Irish Peatland Conservation Council and I hope to see you for our next one.